Hey guys, I'm Lee Morris with fstoppers.com and videoproductsforless.com wanted to sponsor a video where they simply send me an intro cinematography kit. They told me to put it together, kind of review it, use it, see how it works. Let's see how it compares to my Sony a7S III. All right, in all honesty, guys, I have no clue what we've got here. I just pulled it out of the box. We have so many trinkets and cables and this is ridiculous. So I am just gonna start from the camera itself and we will build from there. All right, the heart of this build here is the Blackmagic Design Pocket Cinema 4K and uh, this camera has a massive following. It's basically like the size of a DSLR. Obviously it doesn't have uh, a viewfinder or anything, but when you look on the back, the touch screen is huge. I have a buddy who swears by this camera and he's like, it's the easiest camera to use ever, man. You gotta switch over to Blackmagic. So I'm excited to give it a try today. Uh, the cage that is on this camera came like this in the box, um, is not part of the actual camera. This is made by Condor Blue and this cage is going to allow us to attach many more things to this camera. So let's get to it. First thing I'm gonna do is throw a lens on here. All right, I know I'm going to pronounce this incorrectly. This is either the, the Meek or Meeke or Meki Cinema Prime 25 millimeter T 2.2 micro four thirds lens. Uh, this lens is geared, meaning that you could put a follow focus on it and it feels good. That feels really nice. It's got a long turning radius that's gonna work really well if you wanna have either a follow focus knob on your setup or you wanna have a uh, wireless system for a, a external focus puller. But uh, this feels really nice. And of course, uh, instead of F-stops, we have T-stops, which are a little bit more accurate for video. And we have a nice smooth rotation on that aperture as well. So you could actually rack your exposure smoothly with this while you were shooting if you wanted to. I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but that is a smooth aperture. That's what you get with cinema lenses. The other cool thing about this camera and these lenses, is it's, it's a micro four third system. And as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of the Panasonic GH5. So this lens will fit on any micro four thirds camera, including the GH5, which I think I might own eight of them. So uh, that's pretty cool. Maybe we should do the shoulder mount next. I'm incredibly thankful that they sent me the rail system with everything already attached. I think if they sent me all this stuff individually boxed, I'd be here all day trying to figure out how it goes together. But this is going to be a rail system here that allows you to attach different things. Again, if you wanted to have like a follow focus system, um, you could attach it to this rail system. It also has the arms here, so you can use this as a shoulder mount. And then on the back here, we have the option for a battery, which I would assume is this. We'll get to that in a second. Let's see how this attaches. All right, I'm learning about this gear along with you guys. Honestly, I did not know what I was getting in the mail. This rig system, like the rails and the grips and everything. This is the Condor Blue Ultimate Rig for Blackmagic Cinema Camera 4K or 6K. So it is specifically made for this camera. Up top here, I've got a handle. So it's like a vertical grip. So if you wanted to be able to easily hold the camera or get really low angles uh, with the camera, it makes it easy. It also then adds the hot shoe up a little bit higher. And I'm looking at pictures online of this kit far more complicated than what I'm going to be setting it up as today. Um, and they've got tons of stuff attached to this. All right, the microphone that I have here is the Asden Nigo Maru, Japanese for 250 series. This microphone comes in four different applications. They all have similar sound. They all have a 10 year warranty, which is pretty crazy. It's the first shotgun microphone to natively have the mini XLR uh, cord or cable and the Pocket Cinema 4K and 6K both have this jack. So this mic plugs directly into the side of this camera.
Ah. <laughs> this is really funny to me. This is the Lytra Studio 3000 LM. I have honestly never seen this before. Um, I saw the picture of it on the box and I thought this was a light that I already owned. Lytra sent me probably a couple years ago their mini version of this light, which is literally like this big, and it looks identical to this. What I love about the little one is it's so freaking bright. The battery's built in, the whole thing's waterproof, it's color shiftable, as is this one. I'm shifting from 10,000 Kelvin to 2,000 Kelvin, that's huge. Let's see what else it can do. It's also got a tent shift, so I am tent shifting green and magenta. That's pretty crazy as well. Ah, okay. So this is a straight up RGB light. It can basically do any color. Oh, it can work as a flash at 6,000 lumens, brightness of 3,000 lumens when you're shooting with video, 2,000 to 10,000 by color, full color RGB, DMX controls with an adapter. That's absolutely crazy. That means you could plug it into like a computer or something and control it uh, over a network. Bluetooth compatible. Flicker free, 20 hours of battery life, and waterproof up to 30 feet. So I'm trying to figure out how I want to mount this light. And obviously I don't want to put it in front of our microphone. So I may flip this handle around. Maybe I have the handle on backwards anyway. And then in one of these Condor blue boxes here, I've got this uh, little arm. I'm not exactly sure what this is called. I have some other products that look similar to this made by other companies, and these are so handy when you need them. And basically, I'm just gonna screw this in. You can, you can basically put this in any orientation and then just tighten it down. I'm gonna make it straight and then tighten it down. That's gonna make it easier to screw in. All right, now, <laughs> If you wanted to move this a little bit, you know, get it uh, away from the microphone, you simply loosen this. You can put this wherever you want it, and then you could lock it back down so you could light that way. And obviously, depending on how you're going to line up your subject, you don't want your microphone casting a shadow on your subject. So keep that in mind. Next up, the battery. Gen Energy Lithium Ion Battery. This battery is going to allow us to charge both the camera and I believe the light at the same time. All right, I think you guys are probably having trouble seeing me at this point. This thing's getting bigger and bigger. I am reading here that this battery is US military drop test compliant. And they have actually asked me to drop it on the ground and prove that it works. So let's go outside and do that. This thing has a cableless design, meaning that everything on the circuit board is soldered. So if you drop it, there's less that can go wrong. It's also short proof. It has a microcomputer inside that can detect the currents. And if it goes up too quickly, it can cut the power before it damages your battery. Other cheaper batteries do not have this. And if you have any sort of surge, it could destroy your battery. It's locked in. Yep, still coming on there. I think I might have to take off this light. It's so cumbersome at this point. Okay, so I've got a Condor Blue cable here, and this cable allows me to connect the battery pack to the Blackmagic Cinema camera, which has, I believe, its own proprietary power cable. I haven't seen this power cable except for this camera. Maybe this is an industry standard, but... Uh, as you guys know, I am not in the cinematography world. All right, let's cut it on, see if I'm getting power. Yes, AC power, cool. And then the cool thing about this battery is that it has the LED lights on the side. So it, it'll tell you how much battery life you have left because the camera obviously doesn't know. The camera just thinks it's plugged in. On the back here, we have a pop-out USB-C jack as well, and I think this will allow us to plug our big battery pack into this light so that we could have even more power. Yes, charging. 
All right, the last piece of this puzzle is the mat box. And the mat box connects to the rail system. And then using this, we can perfectly match it to the height of the camera lens. So let's go ahead and slide this on. And then once we slide it back, I'm gonna tighten it up so we get the right height to the mat box. And then we can tighten up these uh, clamps on the rail. Now, the reason why you're going to want a mat box, uh, it usually does a little bit better job than your standard lens hood. Um, they are filled with this matte black material um, that just doesn't reflect as much light as your standard cheapo plastic lens hood. Uh, but more than that, it has these filter holders built in. So you can basically put square filters into this and drop them in. And this holds two different filters at the exact same time. This mat box in particular is made by Genes Tech. And uh, once again, I will put a link in the description to the exact model number. All right, I think we can put our crazy light system back on. Let's turn everything on here. I would ne never be recording with this light like this, but uh, so you get the full effect. Woo, hefty. All right, guys, let's set up this shot. I have my beautiful assistant with his gorgeous golden locks sitting on a bench here. I'm shooting at uh, T 2.2, so I'm getting some really nice shallow depth of field. Let's go ahead and cut this light on and see what this looks like just as a key light off to the side here. I feel like without this light, we still have really nice natural light here. I think it's gonna look better to use this as a hair light and uh, kind of like a kicker light off of his cheek. So let me run around the back here and set this up. One small change that I wanna make, I wanna warm up the light in the background and make it look a little bit more like uh, sunlight or you know, like a sunset or something like that. Right now I have it set to 5,000 Kelvin. Let me change that. So I've gone to 3,000 Kelvin. Yeah, I like that a lot. I think that looks a lot better. All right, so I think this looks great. Let's head to the computer and grade it. Now you guys may have noticed that the footage out of the Blackmagic camera was a little bit flat looking. That is by design. What we're gonna do now is stretch the image out. Right now everything's kind of compressed in the middle of the histogram. We want to spread everything out and get the brightest brights and the darkest darks without crushing anything. You can see here in uh, Premiere, I have my Lumetri scopes up. And the way this works is anything over 100 is clipped past white and anything uh, below zero is going to be beyond black. But as you can see, we have tons of headway in between both of these. So we need to spread this out. What I like to do first is go down to curves under my Lumetri color and uh, just start pulling this down. And what we wanna do is just get it right before it hits black. And then what I wanna do is grab the upper right and just push it right until we hit 100 up here. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go over to basic correction and I'm gonna add a little bit of, well, I might go to creative first and add a little bit of saturation and vibrance here. This is already looking much better. All right, going back up to basic correction here. Let's see what we can do. If I just push some of these shadows up and then I can lower the blacks a little bit more. I think that's looking pretty good. All right, I think that is looking much better and we can go over to effects controls and toggle uh, our Lumetri color on and off to see the difference here. Obviously uh, massive, massive difference. Uh, big thanks to VideoProductsForLess.com for sponsoring this video. Again, if you guys are looking for really high-end video production uh, hardware, definitely check out their website. Like I said earlier, uh, sometimes they might have the cheapest prices, but in many cases, some of this stuff is uh, special order stuff, and they might have it in stock when other stores do not. So check it out.